Now, Hollywoodland is based on real events involving the murder-slash-suicide of actor George Reeves, who played Superman in the wildly successful late 50s, early 60s TV series, The Adventures of Superman. Let's take a look. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Now, when Reeves, who's played by Ben Affleck, and I might add, this this role bought Ben Affleck back from the dead. He'd just done that fucking thing jiggly with Jennifer Lopez. Before that, he'd done Daredevil. Um, so he was on, his career was practically dead. This bought him back from the dead. Okay. So when Reeves, played by Ben Affleck, is killed, down on his luck, P.I., this guy's played by Adrian Brody, investigates. And it turns out there are a lot of people who would have liked to see Reeves dead. He had an affair with a ruthless studio head's wife. He left that wife for he left that woman for a younger woman. And even the younger woman wants to kill him as well. Has Reeves canceled their upcoming wedding? So that's the studio head, the studio shed's estranged wife. The young gold digger, all who had reasons to kill him. So that's three people at least. But Reeves himself was depressed. His acting career went nowhere after Superman, a role he loathed playing in a cartoon suit, he says, and no one takes him seriously. So did he kill himself? Well, these are the questions Brody's P.I. must grapple with. How does his P.I. do his best thinking? How does he imagine the possibilities? The extraordinarily inventive scene flips in just this aspect are what I want to drill down on. So let's take a look at the first of these scene flips. Now keep in mind that what you're watching is in no way a flashback, but it is an imagining. So where are we? We're outside George Reeves' house. There's Brody's P.I. character. Suddenly we're in the house. What's happened here? Well, Brody is imagining one of the possibilities about what happened to George Reeves. Let's watch. Christ. Fuck you. Nobody wants to hear your mopey singing. This is my house. He goes upstairs. Party they are like a goddamn bus station. Goddamn miserable son of a bitch. Christ. Don't you walk away from me. Shut up. I hold myself out to this shithole burg for you. And you uh -huh. have the ball to tell me it's off? God. He grabs the gun. Listen. God. What are you doing? What the I'm the fucking man in this room. Turn you and wrestle. You have been. You give it to me. Give it. Give it. His girlfriend accidentally kills him while they argue. Where do we go from here? Boom. We're right outside the house again, and we zoom back into Adrian Brody. The whole event is an imagination of one of the possibilities of what happened to George Reeves. Now, in the sequence preceding the next scene flip, the movie runs through evidence that suggests Reeves was murdered by a ruthless producer whose wife had an affair with Reeves. So how does the director handle this? Here's the scene right before. And boom, we're in Reeves' house again, in the living room the night Reeves died. This is a little confusing until we get to the last scene change. Let's watch. Wow. All right. Very nice. Thank you. You're very kind. What did you think? My sweetest dream? Moved to tears? I thought you sounded like a goddamn beaner. Note that it is just a little different here. Reeves sits down on the bed. And then some thugs attack him and boom, he's killed. The director pulls back and boom, we're outside the house. And there's Brody. So in this case, the director's confident enough that he completely leaves off the first sequence showing Brody outside the house, but instead we jump from a completely unrelated sequence. Okay, now I think it's important to notice that the director's set up a device here. He's instructed us how to watch when we see Brody outside the house and then suddenly we're inside the house. We have to have this knowledge to understand what goes on in the, scene, in the scenes that really are the movie's climax. I think this is a virtuosic display and I think 
what we've examined about how the scene flips is absolutely necessary to understand what's going on in this last because it does it a lot more than one or two times. For God's sakes, if you guys have made it this far, watch the rest of it. Hollywood Land deserves it. Okay, you ready? Let's watch the film's climax. All right, here we are outside the house with Brody. He moves toward the house. And we're back in the living room the night Reeves died. And there he is, outside again, watching. What is she looking at there? That's a cute bit right there. Did she, did she hear Brody? But Brody's not there, right? I love how he's mixing it up here. There he is, he's inside the house. How can he be in the house? And he's looking at where the scene happened. He's in the living room now, watching. Good night. Reeves climbs the stairs and he gives a bow. Is that his bow to the end of his life? There he's looking to somebody in the closet or at the other hall it seems. Gets ready for bed once again. He looks again over in the direction. Who's there? It's Brody again, with a shaft of light on one eye, as if he's a voyeur, as if he's part of the scene as it happens. The dejected Rees on the bed. Brody becomes so saddened he can hardly stand. Crouches on one knee watching. Look at his eyes. Reeves looks at Brody. Look at those eyes. In that one moment, we know the truth. Back outside to Brody. Brody was outside the entire time. Climax of the movie is over. Now, Kotler, the director, said that he wanted to leave it open-ended what actually happened to Reeves. Um, he may have wanted that, but the editor sure changed it. Uh, whoever changed it, I think it's clear from the ending that the intent of the film is that Reeves shot himself. Why? Because of that look he gives at the end. Uh, it just seems to me that it's clear. Hollywood Land, I think, is a sensational film, and I, I hope you enjoyed this, looking at the climax and at this, this device that the director and the writer and the editors came up with uh, to change the film up this way and present us with a completely new way where... It's as if the, the character of Adrian Brody enters the scene as it happens, and um, that's almost YouTube-ish. Cinema ver Verite, I think it's called, where you're conscious of the camera. I'm sure somebody will correct me. Uh, so, I mean, that's it for a look at the pivotal scenes in Hollywoodland. I hope you join me next time when I take a look at the, uh, the best Star Trek episode of them all, of all series. Um, I think you'll be surprised at my choice. Uh, that's it for this time. Here comes a sign-off. Strength and honor.